Welcome back here on TSL Today. It's a little bit of a rainy Wednesday in Blacksburg, Virginia. We're here at the Corporate Research Center. I'm Giovanni Heater, joined alongside Will Stewart. And uh, we sub out Kyle Marshak for Will Stewart to break down Will's top five Virginia Tech versus NC State games. First of all, Will, your first appearance on TSL Today. So we can't thank you enough for uh, believing in us and, and giving us a platform. And uh, I'm going to kind of tee you up to just let you take the reins right now. Let me go. Yep. Okay. So uh, you and I were talking last night. We decided to do my top five uh, NC State Virginia Tech football games. So the two teams have played 12 times in my lifetime. They played in 1964, a month before I was born, and didn't play again until 1986 when they played in the Peach Bowl. And uh, spoiler alert, that game might be in my top five. So uh, losses that I remember are 7 to nothing in 1991 in Raleigh. That was very frustrating because Will Fuhrer, if I remember correctly, threw five interceptions that day, <laughs> like two in the end zone, and Tech lost by a touchdown. And 17-16 in 2004, Brandon Pace missed, I think, a 40-yard field goal as time expired. Virginia Tech is, in my life, 9-2-1. and one. Okay. So those are the two losses that I just went over. The tie was 1992 when, when a uh, – Tech football team with a bad record tied a ranked NC State team. NC State kicked a wounded duck field goal as time expired to tie that game at 13. So that accounts for the 2-1 and one and the 9-2-1. and one. Okay. So my five top games were picked from the other five. Now, I got to admit, some of the games I don't really remember, even though I was a big fan at the time. So the wins in 1989 and 1990 that Tech had, I don't really remember you know, and they don't really stand out, so that narrows it down to seven games that I have to pick the five from. So here they are. Uh, number five. Number four and number five are on my list are kind of in the same spot. Okay. So I put it number five, September 26, 2020, Virginia Tech 45, NC State 24 in Blacksburg. And that, of course, was Virginia Tech's first football game after COVID. Okay. Uh, it was September 26, and I think Tech was actually supposed to open with UVA that year. But it got, it got can't, it, delayed. Yeah, in the, it yeah. got delayed. I do so. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was first game after COVID. First game with Khalil Herbert at running back. Okay. And we got a little taste of how good he was going to be. But get a load of this. He had 104 yards rushing, but he only carried six times. Wow. And so the tech coaching staff didn't really know yet. Right. Um, Hendon Hooker was out with COVID. And Justin Hamilton, defense coordinator, was out with COVID. Okay. So I think they had Ryan Smith, the corners coach, calling the plays on defense that day, if I remember correctly. Oh, man. So with Hooker out, they started Braxton Burmeister, and they actually played Quincy Patterson. And I was surprised to find this. Quincy had two touchdown passes that day. Really? And as you know, Quincy didn't work out here. He's bounced a couple other places and and really just hasn't developed into a quarterback. So I found it really interesting that he had two touchdown passes in that game. Uh, for NC State, Bailey Hockman started at quarterback and was not good. Right. And they replaced him. You know, Tech jumped out to a 17 nothing lead quick. Right. And they replaced Hockman with Devin Leary, who actually went 12 of 16 for 165 yards. I don't remember him doing that well, but he did well. So that's my number five. Number four is September 4th, 2005, Virginia Tech 20, NC State 16 in Raleigh. Uh, what I remember about that game is – Marcus Vick was, he's in the 2002 recruiting class. He redshirted, played, alternated some with Brian Randall in 2003. Then Marcus got dismissed from school for 2004. Right. So the, this was the season opener in 2005 on the road at NC State. And so that was Vick's debut as the, the sole you know, starting quarterback. He didn't do all that great. He was 10 of 21 <laughs> for 108 yards, and he ran for 31 yards. That's not, that's not very good. <laughs> no, you, you could see the playmaking ability, though, but Tech was outgained 438 to 232. Holy cow. And they won anyway. Tech had no turnovers. NC State had three. Tech had six penalties for 40 yards. NC, NC State had 12 penalties for 105 yards. Okay. NC State was coached by Chuck Amato at the time. Right. It was Amato's next to last year. I saw um, something, and I don't mean to interrupt. I saw something where... Bill Roth tweeted about it. There was like an NC State fraternity that mistook um, that mistook Mikey in the booth for uh, their coach or something. And there's like a whole story that goes along with that. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was weird. It, it, I guess we'll have to look. It's like their new podcast, so we'll have to check out the new episode. Amato was was a trip. He was called Chuck the Chest. Okay, um, and and I 
So I actually have some some stuff I copied from Chuck Amato's Wikipedia profile that I found really interesting. He played football at North Carolina State. He was a three-year letter winner in both football and wrestling. Wow. He played linebacker on the 1965 team that won an ACC conference co-championship. And, and he posted two undefeated seasons as a wrestler, earning two ACC titles at heavyweight in 1966 and in the 191-pound class in 1968. So wow. Chuck the Chest, known for his raspy voice, his big chest, and his red shoes, was an ACC champion wrestler. So interesting wow. stuff. All right, okay. game number three, and this is, I, I had to go look this up. This is fascinating. So number three was November 21st, 2009. Okay. Virginia Tech 38, NC State 10 in Blacksburg. Now, what everybody remembers from that game is Ryan Williams dragging an NC State defender into the end zone. <laughs> and if you guys haven't seen, you young guys may not have seen that. I don't clip. think I've seen that. Google Ryan Williams, NC State, and try to find it. He gets down the sideline, and an NC State defender grabs him and gets his jersey. And what you wind up with is 10 yards at the end of the run where Ryan Williams is dragging this defender who's on his back on the ground, holding on to Williams' jersey. I think and I Ryan, found it. Ryan Williams drags him into the end zone. Well, we're going to plug that. So right here we'll leave a breath. Second down and six from the 19. Virginia Tech rolling. First possession of the second half. Taylor hands it off to Williams. Jersey. Well, he doesn't care if he has a jersey or not. He's going to run with it. And this is what I like about it right here again. You see the hole open up. And look at this. Talk about a workhorse back. I don't care if you're holding me back. I'm still going to run through it. Look at this. Look how far he drags her Oh, along. my goodness. And they give him the touchdown. Looked at it one more time. For right when we're going to show it on the uh, post production, it's just really cool. So if you ever hear the uh, the nickname Ryan M. F. Williams, that's, that's <laughs> a, that play is pretty much where that comes from. But what is what is most notable about that game is Cody Grimm, who was I don't remember what position Cody was playing. I don't know if he he was a whip or a rover, probably a rover. Cody Grimm, Russ Grimm's son, played at Tech, was a really good safety. He forced three fumbles in the span of four offensive plays by NC State and he forced seven fumbles that season which is good for third all time in NCAA history wow there's a guy from I think Iowa or Illinois who forced nine fumbles in a season okay about 10 years ago there's another guy who forced eight in a season and then there's a handful of guys who are in third place with seven in a season so Cody Grimm forced seven fumbles that year but three fumbles in four Three forced fumbles and four snaps is unheard of. <laughs> that's insane. Uh, you know, Bill Roth would probably remember the exact record. Clearly, that's an NCAA record. Right. You know, you just, it's, a, it's an incredible stat that nobody ever talks about. Right. All right. So, number two is October 2nd, 2010. Virginia Tech 41, NC State 30 in okay. Raleigh. And that, of course, was the Tyrod Taylor Russell Wilson game. Russell okay. Wilson was playing for uh, uh, NC State at the time. And Tech got off to a really bad start. They were down 17 nothing with like one minute into the second quarter. Wow. So it was just boom, 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 and they were down 17 nothing. And things, things looked really grim. And then Tech scored right for half to make it 17-7. And the opening kickoff of the second half, David Wilson ran it back 92 yards for a touchdown. Holy cow. Tech missed the extra point, so it was 17-13. From that point on, it was game on. Really? And so Tech eventually took control of the game. It was back and forth for a while, and Tech took control of the game and won at 41-30. to 30. Uh, Darren Evans had 15 carries for 161 yards. Tyrod Taylor had 16 carries for 147 yards. Oh, my gosh. So between the two of them, 308 yards on just 31 carries. For a which, quarterback? Which is Izzy Abanacandalite. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, to, to have 31 carries and over 300 yards. Russell Wilson threw three interceptions, which was a big key to Tech winning the game. Right. Um, but he also threw for 362 yards and three touchdowns. So Wow. It's a lot of offense. Now, number one, of course. All right, I've been on nine minutes. I will spend <laughs> two or three minutes on this. Number one is, and, and this is a landslide. This is easy. The uh, 1986 Peach Bowl. It okay. was played the day after my 22nd birthday. 
So it was December 31st, 1986. And before the 93 Independence Bowl and before the bowl streak, there was the Peach Bowl, the 1986 Peach Bowl. Tech had never won a bowl game before. Wow. This was either their sixth or seventh bowl game. I don't really recall. Okay. And they played NC State, and they beat them uh, 25-24 on a last-second kick, last-second field goal. Um, The game had way too many twists and turns to get into in the context of TSL today. It really deserves its own podcast. But I was a senior. I was 22 years old. And me and a bunch of my college friends um, took a Greyhound bus down there and stayed at this ratty hotel and went to see the game and <laughs> where was it atlanta it was in atlanta fulton county stadium okay where the braves used to play at that point in time that's where they had the peach bowl okay so some interesting notes from that game like i said it was a back and forth game with so many twists and turns um chris kinzer was virginia tech's kicker at the time and chris was from pulaski county and he was a straight on kicker he was not soccer style and he had a really interesting season i th- I don't remember what year he was. I know he played the next year. I think he was a junior this year. He was 22 of 27 on field goals that year when that sort of accuracy out of college kickers wasn't common. And he had an interesting year. He missed his first two of the season really, in a a game against Cincinnati that I think Tech wound up losing. Um, So he missed his first two. Then he made 17 in a row. Wow. And then he missed – Three in a row. <laughs> and I remember the three in a row that he missed. It was at Richmond. My buddies and I traveled to Richmond to watch Tech play Richmond. Okay. And Kinzer was one of four that day. Wow. Which was so out of character for him. But then he closed the season by making five in a row. Now, there's a caveat there. That's regular season stats. Right. Um, I didn't have a chance to look it up and see how he did in the Peach Bowl. Point is, he was money. He had made a 50-yard field goal in the rain as time expired to – uh beat Kentucky earlier that year. So he was just an awesome money kicker. So it was a back and forth game and I've got some notes here with, so tech was down 24 to 22 and they got the ball in like their 20 with, I don't know, a minute and a half left or something like that. And they started chipping away and driving downfield. And with 33 seconds left to go, tech had no timeouts and Maurice Williams runs uh, I don't know how, how long it was, but, you know, they were getting down close to the NC State red zone. Maurice Williams runs, gets tackled in bounds. 33 seconds left to go. Clock is running. Williams, he's a little gimpy. He's got a little cramp or something. He gets up, he tries to run to the sideline, and the tech coaching staff yells at him, get down, get down. <laughs> so he falls back down. Oh, my leg, my leg. So they stop the clock, and they tend to his cramp. Right, you know? right. And so there are rules in place these days for running time off the clock and all that stuff. There was nothing in place back then. Right. So the NC State fans, of course, are furious. So that stops the clock. And with fourth and three, Tech quarterback Eric Chapman completes a pass to the state 29-yard line, 15 seconds left. So it's first down, clock stops, Tech lines up, and they run a play and they hold. Oh, man. So they get booted back to the 39-yard line. They are now out of field goal range with 11 seconds left. Okay. So with 11 seconds left to go, they throw a pass to the end zone to David Everett, who is he, he's a like a major gifts representative in the Hokie Club now. David's been working for the Hokie Club for many years. Okay. So again, 11 seconds left, 39-yard line, throw it to the end zone, and State commits pass interference. Oh, man. So they move the ball down to the State 23-yard line. With four seconds left to go. Now you can kick it. Now, clock is stopped. Tech has no timeouts. And so uh, uh, I'm suddenly blanking on the NC State coach's name. Uh, Dick Sheridan, I think it was. He calls a timeout. Chris Kinzer. First of all, he gets out there. They do the whole thing where he gets out there, line up, ready to kick the field goal. And right before they snap the ball, NC State Ice calls, calls a timeout. Yeah. So the teams go to the sidelines, and Kinzer doesn't move. He just – right where he's – he just – Takes his helmet off, kneels down, and just sits there at the middle of the field on one knee, looking bored. That's funny. The timeout ends. Everybody comes running down on the field, and he crushes it right down the middle for the game-winning field goal. And we freak out. We, we think it's the best thing that ever happened. We, we're all flooding the field. And I've got a picture of a little Virginia Tech flag. We planted it right where we <laughs> took it from. That's awesome. And probably the other trivia item from that game that's interesting is it was broadcast. I can't remember the network that did it. It was, it was on the US, USA network. I can't remember the name of the, the broadcast company that did it. The color analyst for that game was Lee Corso. Really? Yep. 
Yeah. Interesting. So that is my number one game of all time. Anybody who lived through that knows it just as the kick. So it, it really resonates with fans of a certain age, you know, people, people my age and older. So those are my top five. Virginia Tech NC State football games. That is awesome. Just to piggyback off of uh, what you said about Kinzer, he went two for two that day. Uh, one of them was from 46, and the game winner was from 40. So 46. So so that means he was 24 of 29 that season. Wow. Just uh, a phenomenal accuracy record, particularly for a, for a straight leg kick. Right, and that time period. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very cool stuff. Very awesome. Well, Will, thanks so much uh, for being on TSL today. Sure thing. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. All right. Well, that concludes our show today on TSL Today. He's Will Stewart. We had Kyle Marchak, Carter Hill behind the scenes. I'm Giovanni Heater. We'll see you on Friday for TSL Today in Blacksburg.